what a view. <laughs> well, good morning, welcome back. If you're expecting a video for the Lakeland 100 uh, to uh, Dale Main, I'm sorry, but I've uh, changed my mind. I'm doing something different today. What we're doing today is a route recce of the Ennerdale Horseshoe Fell Race. Um, sorry, I just keep getting distracted by this. <laughs> it's absolutely, what a day. I've really chosen a really good day for it. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, anyway, so what I was saying, um, doing a recce of the Ennerdale Horseshoe Fell Race, which takes place on June 10th. So I've decided not to do the uh, leg eight of the Lakeland 100, which I mentioned in my last video at the end of that. Uh, I'm just doing this recce today and it's, uh, yeah, it's a fell race. It's a pretty gnarly fell race. It's one of the longer ones. It's a 20 mile fell race run by Cumberland Fell Runners Association, I think it is. I could be wrong there. Google it. I did Google it this morning, but I've, um, I've since forgotten. <laughs> So it's, uh, yeah, it's a cheeky fell race, to be honest with you. Uh, and it, I've not done one for yonks. So um, yeah, it'd be good. Cause uh, the thing with these is that you've got timing cutoffs and if you don't make those, then you're out the race basically. So yeah, anyway, the first checkpoint, um, hang on, let's, uh, let's just get the map out. So I got myself down to Pete Bland the other day and picked up the Ennerdale Horseshoe Fell Race map. Yeah, I'm not sure if they supply these maps in on the, when you sign in for the race, um, but you can get them down at Pete Bland uh, or online, basically. So anywho, let's go through the checkpoints. So first checkpoint is Great Bourne here. Now, to get up to there, you've got an hour and 15 minutes, I believe. Yeah, so the race starts at 11 o'clock. First cutoff is 12.15 up at Great Bourne. I'm not entirely sure what the elevation is for that. Then the second checkpoint is Red Pike here, and you have 30 minutes. So the cutoff for that is 12.45. Then the third checkpoint is here. This is just past Haystacks at um, something Beck Tarn. I keep <laughs> I can't read it. I need my bloody glasses. Black Beck Tarn. There you go. And it's the um, outflow from the tarn there. Now they do say uh, that that is the first point that you can get water on the route. However, part of this route recce is to determine water sources as well. So, I mean, I've run this area quite a bit. Uh, I do know uh, various water sources along sections of it, but I haven't run the whole route. Uh, so that's what today's recce is kind of about, is to obviously get an idea and feel for the ground and to get an idea of where, where I can pick up water along the way, basically. I mean, on a day like today, as you can see, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, it's overcast, it's bright. We haven't had rain for about three or four days now, I think. Maybe a little bit longer, if I'm honest. So a lot of the bends, burns, bends, burns, burns. <laughs> a lot of the becks, rivers, streams, They'll, pretty, they'll be pretty uh, dry at the moment, I should imagine. So that'd be a good indicator of uh, you know what they'll be doing. I mean, on the day, if it's absolutely hammering it down, everywhere's a water source, isn't it? So uh, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, anyway, let's get on with this. And then checkpoint four is Green Gable here. I can't remember the cutoff point, cutoff time for that. Next checkpoint is Kirk Fell, checkpoint five. Um, I did uh, my last one of my last uh, runs when I went up Pillar. I came off Kirk Fell down the gully, and that's the advised route for this fell race. Um, and you can, well, to be honest with you, you can get off Kirk Fell however, you, however the hell you wish. It's just uh, the best way of doing it is probably down that gully. Um, yeah, anyway, as, uh, as I was saying, checkpoint six is Pillar. Now the cutoff for that is four o'clock, so that gives you five hours to get from the start around to Pillar. And Pillar is the last cutoff, basically. You have another, you have checkpoint seven in Haycox, eight on Iron Crag, and the last one, nine, Crag Fell. So from Pillar, it really is just a long bomb-it downhill, so to speak. Well, with a few undulations. Oh, look at all those geese. They're just coming to land. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> yeah. So from Pillar, it's a straightforward bomb-it, basically, bomb-it back and uh, the cutoff for Pillar is at four o'clock, so you've got five hours to get from the start around to Pillar. Uh, and yeah, so um, like I said, it's a 20 mile give or take fell race. It's pretty gnarly and it's uh, a good day out on the hills. And today's recce is really all about 
just getting uh, getting to grips with the best lines because obviously obviously you've got to meet the checkpoints but all the other summits along the way you need to you, you just want to cut those out you don't want to be bombing it up and down especially haystacks you don't want to go up and over haystacks you want to cut around the side of that which I've never done so that will be a good uh, good point of this wreck is to find a nice route around there without having to go over it and yeah that sort of thing that's what today's all about really uh, right okay well we're gonna get on with this um, yeah right let's crack on to checkpoint one which is up at green sorry great born it's that lump up there. It's quite a big lump, and as you can see on the left-hand side there, the, uh, the incline looks quite cheeky. So um, from the start, you have one hour and 15 minutes to get up there, basically. So um, that's what we're gonna do. Well, actually, no, that's complete bollocks. Because <laughs> I'm gonna be faffing around with this camera, I'm not gonna be making these timings, of course, uh, but it's just, uh, just to give me an idea, basically. So. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm waffling, so uh, let's crack on with it. Cheeky, cheeky first ascent. Oh my word. <sighs> that, that was a cheeky ascent. I knew it was gonna be steep, but oh my word. That was cheeky. So here we are, I think, I do believe, this is the first checkpoint. The cairn here. Oh. So, Great Bourne, checkpoint one. Um, so my Garmin says uh, one hour 22. Time limit is uh, one hour 15. Of course, I didn't actually start my Garmin at the uh, scout camp. I started at the car park also. Uh, I spent about 20 minutes doing my intro, so I reckon on the day, yeah, I reckon I'm going to make it up here in time. But look at that view, oh my word, look at that skyline. Over there in the distance you can see that's Pillar. And then once you've made that, I can, you've got to make that in five hours. You bomb it all the way along here, back, back down there. And the scout camp's at the head of the, uh, head of the tarn, tarn, lake. And Dale Lake. So yeah, are right, we going to head over now to Red Pike? Got from this checkpoint to Red Pike, you got 30 minutes. So the idea or the secret is is to miss out all the tops and find the right lines, so uh, you're not creating, you're not going up and down too much. So let's let's have a look, see what the map says. Yeah, well, basically you want to skirt around the northern northern slope of Starling Dodd, traverse on sheep trods. So let's go and find that. Oh, here about. Oh, well, there you go. That's a good example of why it's good to do a recce. I'm not actually on Great Bourne, and it's a trick point. <laughs> right, well, in that case, let's get on with it. There we are, I think we are. Coming up to the summit of Great Dodd. So, I kind of went a bit wrong back there. I could have taken a much better line up to uh, up to this spot. I ended up kind of just following the uh, the main path, which was a bit undulating and meandered up through these rocks. So I'm sure on the day there'll be a big line of runners that I can follow. <laughs> some taking the right line, some taking the wrong line, like I just did. So 
I also got up to the cairn just down there. You won't be able to see that, but for some reason I thought that was a summit. So uh, yeah, that cheeky, cheeky ascent scrambled my brains a bit. So <laughs> I thought that was the summit. So I think uh, on the day, I don't want to follow the path so much. I want to hop over the back there and then come up here. And then the checkpoint's going to be up on this uh, trig point here. So yeah, let's, uh, let's just head over to that now. So yeah, here we are, trig point, Great Bourne. Oh my word. Hiya, you all right? Don't mind me, just taking a video. <laughs> no, not at all, don't worry about it. So next checkpoint's up on uh, Red Pike, which is all the way up there. And so let's just have a quick look at the map. So there you go. We, uh, at Great Dodd, sorry, not Great Dodd, what are we talking about? Great Bourne. We're going to skirt around the northern traverse on Starling Dodd on the sheep trods, miss out that summit and head up to Red Pike. So you can see just down there, Starling Dodd, skirt around that, avoid the summit and get up to Red Pike. Now you've got to get up to this checkpoint in one hour, 15 minutes. You've got to get over to that checkpoint in 30 minutes. So you want to get up here as quickly as possible to give yourself some, well, good time to get up onto Red Pike. Yeah, Ooh, these are cheeky timings. So, um, of course, I'm faffing around filming, and I'm not really getting a good uh, good sense of how quick I could do it. But that first ascent was absolute killer. So, um, it just definitely took it out my legs. And any niggles that you might have had, which I've got, they, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not a question of oh, I've got niggles halfway round. No, no, those niggles they flare up straight away. So, um, yeah, just bear that in mind. But yeah, I mean, I couldn't have chosen, I couldn't have chosen a better day to do a recce. I mean, look at that skyline. Oh my God. Yes, look at that. Right, let's get over to Red Pike. I just thought I'd show you these things. Electrolyte Fast Chews. Salt Stick, made by, uh, the brand is Salt Stick. Probably many of you know of them. Um, I prefer these sort of things. Uh, they also make a salt capsule. It's basically a tablet ta capsule that you just pop, wash it down with some water. Uh, I kind of prefer those because a lot more convenient and a lot easier than putting mixes into your, into your water. You know, I guess after a while, I kind of get bored of flavored water. I just want to, I just want water, you know, and uh, these things are great. These are the new, I've never, I've only started using these because uh, I got these in uh, peat bland, but uh, you pop two of those in, let them dissolve slowly and Bob is your uncle. So we are at junction here. This is a, this is a point of note. I'm sure many of you who are watching this who are taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I appreciate it, thanks. <laughs> um, but those of you who are, who are interested, or maybe you're even running this route, maybe you've run it, and you, uh, you know, off like the back of your hand, and you're just watching me going, oh, John, you should have gone up there, mate. You totally fucked that up, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's what this recce is all about, is uh, fucking up and rectifying your problems and mistakes and doing little reckeys of, uh, so this, this, this section here is marked on the map. Uh, let's just have a quick look. So we're at this kind of junction here uh, and we're gonna go around the northern part of uh, Starling Dodd. Rever Traverse on sheep trods. So yeah, you can just about make out there, there's a sheep trod slash sheep track. So we're gonna take that, bomb it around, the, uh, around the here and then start heading up onto Red Pike now, timings for me are all just fucked, basically, because uh, I'm obviously faffing around with this camera. And, uh, but I'm getting a feel for, on the day, as I've probably mentioned it already, though I've forgotten. <laughs> um, I reckon I might just squeeze it out. 
Uh, yeah, I might just get in on time, which, uh, yeah. Anyway, all right, well, let's get on this track and we'll just bomb it around here. All right, up to Red Pike. there. Here we go. Here's the summit of Red Scree. And, oh yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's Bassamere down in there. Oh, I've got to catch my breath. But look at that. Absolutely awesome. Oh. All right, uh, well, as you can tell, if you probably noticed, I'm not running with poles. I kind of wish I was now, but um, I don't know. I've uh, really got into not running with them in recent months. I know I've had niggles and stuff and I keep on banging on about them. And I'm moaning, at, oh, my knees and my ankles, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> uh, but I'm just trying to build up strength without poles, um, basically. Oh, Ooh, there's some stones here. Let's have a look at these. The stones are appearing. These are kind of cool. You uh, quite often I've seen I've seen when I've got onto summits, people have uh, left painted stones like this. Very cool little thing to do. Um, I think you can log on as well. I can't remember what it is. There's a website that if you find a stone, you can log on and find out who made it. Or I don't know. I think that's the thing. Or maybe I've just completely made it up. No idea. Oh my word, I'm sweating. Uh, let's have a quick look at the map again. So yeah, we're at Red Pike. Um, when you look online, looking at the timings, uh, so it starts at 11 o'clock. Cut off for Red Pike is 12.45. So you've got to get up here in one hour and 45 minutes. My, my uh, Garmin's been running for two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, so um, I've been faffing around, but uh, yeah, those are cheeky timings. They really are. So from Red Pike, the next checkpoint, checkpoint three, is at Black Beck Tarn, the outflow of Black Beck Tarn. So we want to miss out High Style, which is there. So we're going to skirt around that as best we can. Uh, then we're going to skirt around High Crag, which is behind there. Drop down to uh, Scarth Gap Pass which uh, we've been to recently on previous videos. Skirt round the southern Ennerdale side of Haystack and then come into Black Beck Tarn that way. Um, yeah, I mean, two hours 30. <laughs> Today's gonna be a long day, of course, because uh, we've got 6.7 miles. Uh, you may have noticed I'm wearing this on my wrist now for the moment because uh, uh, I just fancied a change, but as you can see, 6.7 miles there. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a long day. So, uh, let's get on with it. <laughs> oh, my God. Right, let's get this back on. Yeah, so, today's going to be a long day. I think my strategy for the race is just going to be really simple. It's going to be balled out effort <laughs> to make the timings and hold on for dear life, really. That's basically it. Uh, balls to the wall, as the saying goes, digging out blind. Call it what you will, but I'm going to be blowing out my ass and just trying to hang on for dear life. And hopefully I won't crash and burn uh, before the end of uh, the race. And that's my simple 
keep it simple, keep it stupid strategy. You know, um, obviously I'm not gonna be stupid. Uh, if I feel myself starting to break, then I'm gonna come off the gas a bit. But um, that's the strategy. Digging out blind to keep in, keep in time. I'm not trying to beat anyone. It's just a race, wait, uh, a race with myself uh, and to try and finish it and not get uh, timed out basically. And that is the strategy for this race. All right, let's, let's find the best line around high style. Don't know if you can see it all that well, but up there, high crag coming off there is gnarly and very unkind to your knees. Mm. Excuse me, I'm just sucking on a, another electrolyte tablet. So this is a good point of note. We've just come into um, haystacks, which is this big lump here. That big lump there you can see, and then down there below there, that's Scarth Gap Pass. Now the route, the best line, or the line on the uh, on the map, is not to go up and over haystacks, because you're just gonna cause yourself a little undue grief but if you can just make out just to the right there there's a bit of a sheep track or sheep trod that cuts out the uh, well the summit of haystacks and just over to the right a bit I think it meets up with a fence line and you just follow the fence line around so that's what we're gonna do Sorry, I'm just sucking on this mm. let me just crunch through this mm. Ah, that's better. All right, <clears throat> you don't have to listen to me eat that now. So another purpose of this recce was to figure out water sources. And uh, from the start to Black Tarn, Black, Blackburn Tarn or whatever it's called, I can't remember now, there are none. Uh, but afterwards, uh, if you, well, just over there, you can see where we've got to go. Up there, just that big lump, that's Green Great Gable. Just to the left of it is Green Gable and the horseshoe in between is Windy Gap, so uh, there'll be a, probably be a water source coming off there somewhere. And then we're, we're missing out Great Gable to, we're heading to um, Black Sail Pass, which you can just probably make out there, up onto Kirk Fell, and then we're gonna come off Kirk Fell through the gully, which you can see through there. Well, I can see it. <laughs> and then up to um, Pillar, which is behind us. So yeah, like I said, there's no water sources, uh, not really. Um, Hopefully the weather's going to be like this. I mean, this is hot. Well, it's not hot. It's nice and breezy. Uh, I'm, I've got a bit of a sweat on, I must admit. Um, yeah, and I'm doing really bad for time. But hey, you know, this isn't about timings. Uh, and like I've just, like I said back back there, um, it's going to be cheeky, you know. And they do say, you know, if your challenges don't scare you a tiny bit, there's, you're not aiming high enough. So uh, yeah, these uh, these timings are. Uh, they're making my butthole twitch a little bit. So, um, yeah, I hope I make them. I really don't want to be timed out. Yeah, anyway, right, we're, um, we're going to head down here. Head down into Black Cell Pass. Wrong. Uh, Scarth Gap. Sorry. <laughs> Scarth Gap. And then we're just going to head around Haystacks. Not to think then. All right, let's go. Yeah, as you can uh, also see that... <sighs> You're basically picking up the main path uh, along the tops here, and 
it's pretty gnarly. As, uh, as the saying goes, it's technical, it's technical. In other words, it's bloody rocky and but potential for smashing your face in is pretty high. There we go. Now today, I'm wearing my mud claws uh, because, well, just because I fancy trying them out. Yeah, I just fancy trying out my mud claws today. Uh, normally I'd, I'd wear my um, La Sportiva Mutants, but uh, there is quite a bit of, uh, well, from pillar into the finish, it's quite grassy and a little bit muddy. And so these uh, these shoes are really going to come into their own. They're bearing up pretty well on this sort of tour, on this sort of uh, ground as well, um, but it's really quite dry. So uh, you know they're sticking quite nicely. Yeah. Anyway, I'm starting to I'm starting to waffle now. So uh, let's just get on with this. Yeah. <laughs> grind coming around haystacks there uh, I'm not is it the right line to take I think it was you, you just gotta grind it out really so here we are finally getting to checkpoint three the outflow of Blackburn Tarn Blackburn Blackbeck Tarn Black Blackburn yeah Oh, I don't know. My my brain's a bit scrambled. So let's just uh, let's just get up here. Let's get to a good spot so I can uh, fill up my water, have a bit of a chill out. Because uh, there you go, four hours uh, we've been going for, and ten miles, ten point five miles. And I'm guessing the checkpoint will be well. Yeah, here. There you go. That's the outflow there, outflow there, and that's the tarn. And so you can see where we're going now. Uh, once I've filled up, chilled out, I think I'm gonna sit down for a bit, to be honest. <laughs> uh, we're going up there. You can see, so you've got the prominent hill on the left there. You've got three prominent peaks, haven't you? So you left in the middle one there in the distance, that's Green Gable. So we're going up there, that's the next checkpoint. But for the moment, I'm just gonna chill out for a bit, you know? Four hours. Uh, what was the cut? Uh, hang on. Let's check. Let's let's see what the timings are. Let's let's get some water and chill out. Chill the fuck out. <sighs> so yeah, if, uh, as I said a couple of times already. Sorry if I'm boring you. <laughs> so the first checkpoint, checkpoint one, Great Bourne, was one hour fifteen. Red Pike was one hour forty-five. Black Beck Tarn here is two hours 45 so you've got two hours and 45 minutes to get here uh and it's taken me four and a, four hours but um yeah how much of that was uh faffing around i'm not sure oh i started to get cramp oh. Oh. and next checkpoint green gable is three hours 30 you've got to get up there so cut off time is uh two two thirty uh, yeah, obviously I'm not really sticking trying trying to stick to times. So I've uh, I've just had a sandwich, a really tasty sandwich, a succulent Chinese meal. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've just had a sandwich, and I'm gonna head up there now, and follow. Try and look for some um, obvious uh, markers. So there's a fence line up there which you can follow. So if the clag's down, uh, you can uh, follow that fence. So we're gonna go check that out. Uh, I think I know the one because it's got a Moses trod. You don't want to go on Moses trod because it takes you too low. You've got to get up onto Green Gable, which you can just about see through there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to head up there. All right, I'm going to get my stuff ready and we're going to go. Cool. 
Oh, crap, 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 crap. Oh. oh, my word. Here we go. Summit of Green Gable. Oh, that was a cheeky, cheeky, cheeky grind. Oh my word. Uh, <clears throat> so I've been going five hours and 14 minutes, which is over half the time allowed to get up to this checkpoint. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, got a bit overcast, as you can see over there, over there's Pillar, over here's Kirk Fell. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop down here into Windy Gap. And then there's kind of two paths, which you can see traverse around the bottom of Great Gable. There's this one that just cuts around here. It's very, very faint. You can just make it out. I'm going to go, I'm going to try using that. And then of course, there's the other one, which is rather more prominent, which is down there. All right, I'm going to get off this, uh, this summit because it's getting a bit chilly and I've slowed right down. I won't lie, I'm almost in the Hurt Locker. <laughs> yeah, I'm half in, half out the Hurt Locker, so hopefully uh, this is a bit more downhill until, of course, um, the ascent for Kirk Fell, which doesn't look too bad from up here, but, you know, it's one of those cheeky ones because uh, if you uh, if you have a look, it's a rather flat top is old Kirk Fell, so it's a bit of a false summit. You get up the top and you're like, oh, brilliant. And then you went, oh no, hang about, I've got a bit more to go. <laughs> Everybody loves a false horizon slash summit. Yeah, anyway, so this is basically the um, Ennerdale Horseshoe Fell race. It's kind of, ex it's uh, described as an out and back almost, even though it's a horseshoe. Uh, the Green Gable is pretty much the turnaround point. So, um, yeah, if you don't make the timing and you get to Green Gable, they'll probably just send you straight down uh, Ennerdale Valley, which is a 10 mile walk or run all the way back. So, uh, yeah, the walk of shame. <laughs> I don't want to do the walk of shame. But, um, well, there's no shame in it, of course, because, you know, you turned up and you put your shoes on and you went for it. If you don't make it, it doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means you come back and do it again some other day. Uh, right, so um, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm cold, let's go. <laughs> I'm gonna stop waffling. up to uh, Kirkfell summit now. There should be a cairn up here somewhere. Oh my god, yeah, here we are. Oh, finally, this is the summit of Kirkfell. There's a funky little uh, shelter in here. There you go, with a backdrop over there in the clag is Scarfell. Scarfell, yeah, right, our kid, Scarfell. And as you can tell, I've lost my mind a little bit. Uh, because I am officially now in the Hurt Locker. Uh, yeah. Oh, what a grind. I do love pushing the limits and uh, I'm on my limit if I'm totally honest. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This is gonna be cheeky. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've kind of cut down on the filming because um, I wanna start, you know, I wanna get, get a clip on, so to speak, because uh, I've been going now as you can see there, six hours, 14.33 uh, miles. Um, over there is Pillar. As you can see, the summit of Pillar is in the clag. So I think, uh, so coming off Pillar, we uh, come off to the left there where you see the saddle and we shoot up to whatever that lump is there. And then, uh, and then we start heading back. I think that last lump is the last ascent 
and then it's all plain sailing down there. So from here up to pillar, well, 6.7, I uh, can't speak, six hours and seven minutes. I reckon we can get up to pillar within the hour, definitely. So yeah, that'll be uh, oh, definitely up, definitely up there within the hour if I don't faff around vlogging too much. Um, and then of course, I've got to somehow figure out how to shave two hours off that time. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, I think the cutoff time to get up to the top of pillow is five hours. So uh, yeah, cool. All right then, well, let's find the descent off here, which is the, the gully, uh, which we took, um, I was up, when, last time I was up here, I took the gully down. So it shouldn't be too difficult finding that. Cool, let's get on with it. Oh my lordy lordy, here we are finally at Pillar. Uh, uh, oh my lordy lord, not gonna lie, this is cheeky today. Uh, here we are, 7.7 .7 hours, 7.7, uh, 7, 7 hours and seven minutes, 16.66 miles. So yeah, it's uh, chilly. Clags in as you can see, and uh, there's not a lot to see at the moment. So I'm just gonna get my my booty off this hill. I'm gonna shake my booty, shake, shake my booty. Oh yeah, <sighs> got a bit of fell madness. He's gone mad. Yeah. Uh, that was a grind. So, like I said, uh, like I've said countless times. Um, the cutoff for pillar is not seven hours, it's five. Uh, so yeah, so starting at 11, cutoffs at four o'clock. So uh, I need to somehow shave 12 hour, uh, two hours off that time. <laughs> uh, which, you know, on race day, you know, pull it out of the bag. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Yeah. Right, uh, right, I've got to find my way off pillar. I've got to go the correct way. That's what we've got to do. So uh, next checkpoint, I believe, is Haycock. Haycock? Haycock. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, next checkpoint is checkpoint seven at Haycock. So let's get over to Haycock. Here we go, finally, Crag Fell, checkpoint nine. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, what an evening, look at that. I'm not gonna lie, that's probably 
one of the that's probably the hardest thing I've done in a long, long time. Um, my uh, my Garmin, as you can see, died died back at uh, the 18 mile mark. So I think we're I probably I, I reckon we're around about 21, 22 miles here. Uh, blew straight past Haycock. I uh, started to get some crippling cramps, and so I, I had to have an emotional five minutes to myself and totally forgot all about Haycock. So uh, we blew straight past there. Ah, so finally checkpoint nine. So uh, it's been a long, long day. It's just gone eight o'clock and I started, I would say, either, I think I started just before 11. I, I didn't really look at the time, 11 o'clock. So I've been going for, yeah, nine hours. Pfft. So uh, by the time I get down to the car, it will be close to 10, I should imagine. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna call it quits today. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up and say goodbye. Well, I hope I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, <laughs> I'm still I'm a little bit spaced out, if I'm totally honest. Oh yeah, one thing I should note: uh, there's not a lot of water on this route, uh, so Blackburn Tarn, which was uh, way back then, that was the only time uh, I got a really good water fill. So uh, I'm definitely going to carry two of these. Um, yeah, nothing from really there to here so yeah just be warned um yeah I, maybe that's probably one of the reasons why i started getting cramp i mean really bad cramp <laughs> i'm still <laughs> scream well not screaming but like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it was emotional uh so it's going to make driving home really interesting i tend to have I tend to start cramping in the car on the way home, which is never good, so uh, yeah. Cool, anyway, all right then, well I'm gonna go and uh, get back down to the car and get some, something to drink. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Next video will probably be another fell race recce. I wanna do the Great Lakes, which is a lot shorter, probably the same sort of elevation, I think. I, I don't really know. But it's uh, that's run by Ambleside uh, Athletic Club, uh, which I'm a member of, so. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that recce. Uh, I've run all around that area already, but I've never really combined it into uh, a single run. So uh, that should be quite interesting. So that'll probably be next week uh, once I get over this. <laughs> once I get it, I'm going to go home and I'm not going to move from my sofa for the next two days, I think. So uh, yeah, cool. All right then, till the next video. I'm going to get going. Cheers, bye. <laughs>